Well, the Tampa Bay Rays lose again. That's kind of been a theme for the month of July, unfortunately. We're getting tired of it. We're getting frustrated, but we got to ride the wave. So let's talk about it right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sembrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Race Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays, as well as our other social media platforms, Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays. You can also email us anytime, Locked On Rays at Gmail. Dot com. Well, the Tampa Bay Rays lose again to the Texas Rangers by a score of five to three. The Rangers are now 57 and 39, while the Rays fall to 60 and 38. It is weird to say that they still have 60 dubs uh, late in July here or midway through July. And it was just a case of too little too late offensively for the Rays. The yeah. bullpen not shining through. We've seen that before and a wasted start. From one Taj Bradley, who if there's a positive to glean, it's Bradley got himself back after uh, several crummy starts over the last several weeks. Yeah, you can definitely take that as a as a highlight, uh, uh, as a silver lining in this one. Taj looked good. Uh, he was, as we said, solid. But yeah, I, I just, you know, five innings and two earned runs, it, nine punches is always a nice to see. Uh, this is a really good lineup. Uh, he made he made work out, out, out of the Texas Rangers, but I, I gotta focus on on the bullpen, man. I'm just I'm just I'm not okay with in a one run game late. Javi Guerra is your best option there. I just don't believe that that should be it. Either one, because. It's either one of the uh, uh, other two. Number one, hey, I can't put Poche in back-to-back outings. I can't put, you know, um, Fairbanks and and all these guys in back-to-back outings. I, I want to protect their arms. Okay, fine, sure. Then that's bad, bad uh, bullpen management. You, you how is Javier the the one guy that you're going to put in there with a one-run game? So. It's either bad bullpen management by Cash and company, or if in a one-run game, the best you got is Javi Guerra, then it's bad a bullpen construction, and that's the front office. Javi Guerra cannot be in a one-run game. How can, how can Javi Guerra be a high-leverage guy when he's shown literally zero evidence in his whole major league career that he's a yeah. high-leverage pitcher? He could be. He one day would be if if he if everything turns out right. But right now, in present time, 2023, July 18th. Well, today is July 19th. But on July 18th, when he pitched, he's not a high leverage pitcher. So which one is it? Is it bad bullpen construction or bad bullpen management by cash? It has to be either one. So who would you have rather the race gone to in that situation? Poche or any of the other common names? It's not the fact that they picked – they didn't pick this guy. I'm I'm just more so uh, flabbergasted, and that's the word of the day, yeah. that uh, that in a one-run game, it's Javi Guerra out of the bullpen. Um, I, I, that I don't understand. I mean, I know you had Diekman uh, warming up, which I don't understand why because, you know, with Corey Seager – I mean, I guess the the three man um, minimum got you there, um, and, and and you can't do much about that. But uh, Seager was batting third or second. Let me check real quick. Second, okay. So yeah, so he was a three batter minimum, so he couldn't go to Deekman there. I don't know. I just, I, I just, I do not believe that J- that 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 Javi Guerra has shown enough in his major yeah. league career to be a one run type of pitcher and one run lean type of pitcher. In a high leverage situation after the seventh inning, in a team that has that has been selling themselves as World Series contenders, no, no, 
You know, if you if you if you're the Yankees and you're last in the division, sure, throw Javi Guerra in there, but you're not the Yankees. You're the Rays. Yeah. Maybe it's a case of I know it's a one run game, but not chasing wins there, and then you have a day game early on the next That's day. And based on how Eovaldi was doing, and then the you have the bullpen after that, um, the Rangers can pretty much hold for it. I mean, if we're being honest, I am leaning more towards the Rangers as a more viable, legitimate World Series contender than the Rays at this juncture. And I'm glad you brought up the point about Javi Guerra. He is not a high leverage guy yet. He has the stuff to be a high leverage guy. I mean, sure. with that fastball and that breaking ball. I mean, he looked like a high leverage guy in the eighth inning. <laughs> it was a little bit too late. Um, and also, again, uh, walks certainly aren't going to help anybody's cause. But Marcus Simeon and uh, Corey Seager, there's a reason that they're making $500 million combined where they can take a 97, 98, 99 fastball on the inner third from a righty or lefty and push it out wherever they want to. Like Corey Seager's home run, that, that's that got to be one of the more impressive home runs I've seen. Just a line drive to straightaway center and turning. I mean, look, he is, he's been amazing this year. He's been amazing for his career. So um, it's, and I guess it's also, really kudos and credit to what Taj Bradley was able to do going toe to toe against yeah. Nate Eovaldi, the 12 year vet and not um, hiding away in the moment and having pretty much everything working from uh, the fastball, the cutter to the change up to the slider moving in all different directions and working well off of each other. Uh, I, what, what I, what, what you just said though, that, that top of the lineup, Semyon and, and Seager. So it's not only a one run lead. Yes. I, the, the chasing thing, fine. But it's a one run game nonetheless. It's a team that you're going to possibly be facing in, in, in the playoffs if you if you stay long enough. Yes. Uh this is a good matchup. This is to kind of like, you know, steel sharpen steel sort of mm -hmm. thing. See what you're made of. And Javi Guerra's the guy. And not only that, but dude, who is he facing? He's facing nine one and two. What? That's when you bring him up. But it, it, if and Leody Tavares isn't your typical number nine hitter. Like what they do with their lineup construction, they're putting good guys in the number eight and number nine spot between him and Duran. Like yeah. Leody Tavares could legitimately be a top of the order guy. Probably should be a top of the order guy on most teams. But they yeah, got Simeon and Seager. Exactly. So, so I, I just, I don't believe that. Javi Guerra has any type of, and by the way, this is not a, a thing on Javi Guerra. It's on any Javi Guerra type of pitchers, which is young guys that have not shown any type of, of ability of, of, for high leverage situations. Like if that game was five to one in the eighth inning. Yeah. Bring Javi Guerra in. Sure. That's okay. Yeah. But the, the whole chase, I don't chase leads. I think it's ridiculous when it's a one run game. Especially when you have guys like Randy Rosarena and Brandon Lau who can just put you on, on, a, on a tie game situation with a swing of the bat. Which, by the way, they did the next damn inning. So right. it's like, don't tell me we don't chase leads here when it's one run and you've got guys. You've got a home run derby almost champ there and a guy that put 40 bombs two years ago. Come on. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. I uh, no, that's that's accurate. We have more to discuss, but first, Ulysses, we have to tell the audience about something extremely important. Yes, yes, we do. And that is Dave. By the way, when we talk about Dave, I want you guys to know that Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you could get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of the Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest, and then you can settle up later. So download Dave today at dave.com slash MLB and get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Uh, download Dave app now. Again, go to dave.com slash MLB for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. 
banking services provided by Evolve member FDIC. All right. So uh, getting to a little bit more on the game. Uh, again, this isn't locked on Rangers, but just really impressed by what they've shown so far in this series, not just offensively and pitching wise, but defensively uh, between Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon, Leody Tavares. Um, I mean, really, they're just solid all across the board, seeing good plays from Nathaniel Lowe coming yeah. into his own. Josh Young, like Josh Young is, he might be the next great, he might already be the next great third baseman. I, I've said it before, he's kind of going to be their Evan Longoria or their Michael Young, I think, mm -hmm. uh, for that franchise. But, um, and, and I wanted to check this and I looked it up, their defensive run saved metric. I think they're second in all of baseball and it showcases itself while you're watching the games where all the plays that need to be made, they handle it with a plum and Hey, we need a double play here. We got it guys. No issue at all. So um, that was something to watch out for, but uh, another unfortunate loss for the Rays. So now by my math, uh, they are three and 10 in the month of July. And Kevin, you're completely right. They're three and 10. It's not great. Uh, how many games do we have left in this month? Like, let me, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to kind of like freak out people a little bit just for funsies. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They've got 10 games left. And who so, are those games against? It's not slappies. Nope. It's against the Orioles for four against the Marlins for two and then against the Houston Astros for three on their turf and against one against the Yankees in the Bronx. So, okay. So what you're saying is that they're not going to get to 500 for the month of July. Wouldn't that be their first losing month of the year? I it believe? would be their first losing month. So there's 10, if, if, if they play 500, I mean, obviously they, they don't get there to, to 500 um, on, on the, on the month. It's a shame. I, I it does look like that's the way it's going to be though. It, it, it you know, with, these games i don't i don't i don't foresee anything anything better than 500 i'll take right now i'll sign for it um but these are not easy teams and thank god for the la dodgers and i will never say that again um yeah. but yeah they beat the the baltimore orioles so the a at least remains at one game <laughs> the lead so there you go uh level of concern scale of one to ten on the rays by the end of the month or by August 1st uh, that they will still be in the lead in the AL East or they'll fall to second or third fiddle. No, I don't, I don't think the Rays will ever fall down to more than second. Like I, I, okay. if they, if they, if they hit third, big problems, big trouble. What is going on? Are you still putting Javi Guerra in, in high leverage situations? Um, that was a joke, people. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see that happening. Them first and second, first and second, like that's that's I think what's going to happen now. It's for the rest of the year, the Orioles and the Rays are just going to be going up and down for that spot. Hopefully, by the end of the the, the year, the Rays are number one. But yeah, I don't, I don't see that you know massive collapse happening. It just sucks right now. I mean, it, it just when Wanderer, Randy, and Yandi are quiet. It's very difficult right now in July to produce offense. It really is. Um, you know, in April, it was no, it, it was not an issue. Oh, Wanders didn't hit. Yandy didn't hit. Randy didn't hit. That's okay. Jose Siri's there. Isaac Paredes is there. Uh, Taylor Walls is there. My God, yeah. do you remember? Ta you remember? Do you remember April Taylor Walls? That was fun. Again, it's a long season. Guys are going to have their ups and downs, ebbs and flows for a week, couple weeks at a time you think a guy turned a corner and then they regress to their normal selves. It, it's what happens. And got to be honest, got to be frank here. I don't really love the raised chances in the afternoon game where you have Zach Littell of all people opening the game, going up against John Gray, who has <laughs> thrived, been very successful in a Rangers uh, uniform, uh, which makes sense considering the, Rangers gave him a lot of money to come over from the Rockies where the Rockies, uh, that is a, a hellhole 
for for pitchers. That's why they they can't sign any free agent pitchers. They have to acquire all their pitchers by a trade or in the draft and develop them and just uh, teach them to to throw sinkers and keep the ball down because the ball flies, of course. So um, obviously his his numbers uh, are improving and have improved uh, in a Rangers uniform. So. Uh, it's the the old TBD bullpen day. Not sure what the Rays are going to do against a guy who's been very productive for the Rangers this year, um, just like the the first two guys that we saw in this series. I don't understand why Zach Littell and Javi Guerra are not used as turnstiles. Let's let's go. Let's go. oh didn't work. Come on, another one and another bring one. up Erasmo Ramirez. Let's give him a shot, dude. I mean, honestly, like whoever. Whoever, and I know Erasmus probably going to 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 get some work for that fifth inning, um, for that fifth inning, for that fifth spot uh, in the rotation that we talked about the other day. And then we we're like, okay, who's gonna be the, the guy? Erasmus probably gonna get a, a call uh, sooner or later. But yeah, we talked about this like in in May when they were really struggling in the bullpen, and now it has calmed down um, quite a lot. But how many guys have? actual staying power in the bullpen that you cannot touch them we said like two three at the most i think we said four well that means that three dudes we should be seeing plenty of names like why is zach Littell having so much staying power in in the race bullpen like is there nobody better is there nobody better that you can get for cash considerations nobody better in triple a i don't understand yeah it's uh it's a big question and a big problem and something has to be worked out. And it starts with uh, acquiring Shohei Otani. So let's make that happen. <laughs> let's get it done. Let's uh, add up uh, Junior Caminero and Carson Williams and Kyle Manzardo and Curtis Mead and go acquire the greatest baseball player since Babe Ruth. <laughs> Would that be enough to get Shohei Otani, those four? I think we are all overblowing it it's just two months i think it's going to be it's going to take something big i think like steve garney there was playing um like a little gotcha game on twitter because he was like saying oh if you if the angels ask for manzardo uh but da but da but da would you say yes and then yeah. everybody's like yeah dude and then he came back with like, okay, what about now? And it's like adding need. And then everybody was like, kind of like, oh, I don't know. Well, that's what would happen. It's like, okay, so we're, you're playing gotcha now with baseball trade values. Come on, oh, Let's man. be a little bit more adult. People just have a lot of time on their hands, I guess. I yeah. I gotta I gotta carve out a window to to go on baseball trade values. You got people on. <laughs> playing on Twitter all day with trade values. It's amazing. <laughs> I want that life. Um, we have more to discuss, but first we have to tell you about Sleeper. Sleeper is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming. Sleeper has become the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world with over 5 million active users in 2022 while earning some of the highest levels of engagement per user in the industry. At Sleeper, it's not just about sports. It's about building personal connections and lasting memory. So use promo code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. You'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. All right. Big news, Ulysses. Indeed. Indeed. So on September 23rd, according to Topkin, Trisha, our own Evan Klosky, the Rays will be unveiling two statues, one of Longo's 162 heroic home run and then the other one akinora iwamura stepping on second base and the rays are going to the world series everybody pile on david price pioneered by navi damn Gianna navarro what a name um yeah so those two statues will be unveiled now i've got questions kevin for yes. you okay 
do you put them both in front of gate one like one after you're done with the whole like oh i have i don't have a you know what i can't i don't know if you can say the the word you know <laughs> so people don't freak out i don't have anything bad to bring into this ball game once you pass that stage by the ticketing office which no longer sells tickets because yeah yeah got to do it um, on the ballpark app which ballpark i always have app, to baby. download an update and i forget my login information so it's a whole rigmarole it's a whole thing all the time yeah for me too um do you put both of them there do you put one of them there and then one on like gate four on the other side do you put them inside the stadium uh, what what would you do as the as the super mom, super mind master designer? Where would you do? What would you do? Well, have they have they determined where they're going to place them? Has that been I announced? haven't heard any okay. uh, anything about the location or placement of these things. No. Well, just based on what other ballparks in other organizations do, I went to uh, Nationals ballpark and uh, Phillies ballpark uh, in the past week, and they have big statues great place making uh the main entrance of the ballpark so i think that would be the place to put it as you're walking up leading up to tropicana field so and credit to the rays for really i think for the most part going all in on the 25th anniversary because we do know they are going to be located in house somewhere else at some point whether it's in tampa st petersburg the New stadium isn't going to be the exact same place as Tropicana Field, unless I'm wrong on that. So they're going to have to uh, relocate yes. those statues to another location, which certainly can't be cheap. So I appreciate them for making the effort uh, on that. Um, so that's what I would go with is, you know, kind of the main entrance where the greatest number of people are. Uh, can be seen walking in or walking out or walking by the ballpark. And oh, I so you mean even before then? You mean like with the palm trees and the and 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 the uh, and, and the parking lot like that? That when you're walking into Tropicana, not like after the security thing. Oh, um, well, I think the Phillies did it where. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Um, I just don't want them inside the building. No, 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 not inside the building. I, I think as you're somewhere around the perimeter of the stadium after you've already, um, you know, paid. Been padded your, down. Yes, yeah. been padded down. Because yeah. you also don't want it to get vandalized. Um, or exactly. you want to try to minimize vandalization yes. as well on that. So I think um, it's a, a great thing. And, and I would yeah. hope that maybe they, they consider adding a – a third statue at some point, whether it's, you know, Wade Boggs kissing home plate after getting his 3000th hit, maybe it's Brett Phillips doing airplane arms. You know, I think you can really tie in a lot with the statues. And then on a nearby wall, you have the Rays hall of fame with some expensive looking plaques that have some biographical information and details and, and really kind of make a carve out a section where people can walk around and see the history and take pictures. It's really a great place to take pictures and tag the yeah. Rays and tag yourself and and build some momentum. I mean, if you look at other stadiums, that's what they're there for is for for people to to walk by it, to see it, to soak it all in, and then hey, can you take my picture? And um, it, and learn. it creates a buzz and creates interest, and it's very great uh, place making um, for for those teams. And you learn if you if you, I mean the, the, there's a kid out there who is. 15 years old and he's a diehard race fan and he didn't see 08 you know he didn't live that so what better way yes. to like have a statue and have uh, you know the opportunity to take a picture of it and learn hey what happened there if you're a diehard race fan you obviously do know what happened in 08 but um that's such a, a great other way of uh, of providing learning for the for the for the fandom I, I love this idea. The fact that they're going with Longo 162 and Aki um, as the first two statues does lead me to believe that there will not be either a Dan Johnson mm. statue and there will not be a Brett Phillips 
statue. What um, about a Wade Boggs statue? No cigar. So just two. That that's what they're going with. Those. No, two I'm saying like th- the magnitude has to be like that. They're going for really punch mm. in the face moments. Game four, terrific. One of the best W's, but it's like it doesn't have the the gravitas that I think they're trying to portray with these. Wade Boggs is in the Rays Hall of Fame. We got to do something. We got to have that. They did that. They already did that. They gave him the Hall of Fame. That was it. That was your sculpture, buddy. Um, But I don't know. I want to hear from you guys. What should be the third statue? Write it down in the comments. Um, If it were up to me. Yes. Third statue. I think. uh, I mean, the Brett Phillips one. Airplane it's so arms. Iconic. It's so iconic. Um, I think that would be really cool, especially him being a a race fan growing up to have his own statue. But would you give a statue for a one time moment thing? Do you give a st- I mean, okay, that's fair. But it, it could you argue that what? I mean, Aki Iwamura. That's more big. That's big picture. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. True. So. If if the race had won that World Series, he definitely yes. gets the statue. But they didn't. So I want to walk around that, you know. Maybe, what should be that third statue as of today? As of today, what should be that third statue? It should not be Javi Guerra giving up a three-run shot to Corey <laughs> no. Seager. No. No. Not at all. I Look, I, I'm also looking for something that's punchy and, and a challenge for the sculptor. And I think... Wade Boggs putting his hands down and kissing home plate. That's, that's pretty cool. Kind of that's that's pretty special. But um I like that. Yeah. yeah and I like and that. again, it's one of those things where the Rays have only been in existence for 25 years. There's still there's still more meat on the bone as far as moments to come forward. So we might have to wait another 5, 10, 15, 20 years for that, you know, third statue to come to fruition. Yes, you're right about we will we're gonna have to wait. How about Mike Brasso? How do you feel about that one against Chapman? Oh, the uh, Chapman. No, no. I mean, it's a it's a great raise moment, but I don't know if it's enough to build out a statue. If it was for, you know, clinching the World Series, then sure. Yeah, I um, think. I think that's that's the thing. The sculpt, the the sculpt, the statue. It has to have a bigger scope. Yes. For the team. It can't just be one guy ce- celebrating one guy. You can't do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's drop fair. In the comments. Yeah. I want to, I want to hear you guys' uh, options and the best one will make it on the show. Yeah. And uh, so that'll be September 23rd that, that uh, will be unveiled, I believe. And there'll be a little replica. Um, we should definitely go that, to that game. Yeah. That'd be a good opportunity. And I imagine it's going to be hopping too. Cause that'll be a Friday uh Maybe. september 23rd would be a saturday in oh, the okay. park i think it was the fourth of july uh okay, saturday. September 23rd, yeah uh not to get too into dates here but um yeah, yeah I, I would say you know here's something randy rosarena hit the the do it in 2023 hit the get a clinching hit to win the world series have your arms crossed that could be a statue yes oh oh Thank yes. You. Sign me up. Sign me up and then wrap it up because that's a yes. perfect way to end this episode in a high note. Everybody be happy. Let's get that W today, please. One last thing. These statues will be, I guess, life-sized, correct? That's my understanding. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta go, you gotta go big or go home. What I'm saying. <laughs> so all right. Uh hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe and we will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>